Hey guys, I'm Chantelle. This is Intentional Homeschooling. My mom brought me a library cart from her work, so I'm using it for our homeschool library books. And I thought this would be the perfect time for a library haul. So they're kind of not in any particular order. They're kind of in the order that I've gotten them out from the library. And I kind of want to keep them that way so I know which ones go back. So we're going to go through this in that particular order, except these ones on the top are three that I had upstairs right now. We have such a good library system, let me just say. I know that, I'm fully aware. I request books from all over our province. We can have 100 holds at one time, 100 books out at one time, and we don't have late fees. If it's over a month late, then we have to pay for the full book unless we bring it back. It's amazing. I know some people have to pay for every hold. Some people can only have 10 holds. Some people can't do any. I understand that we have an amazing system. And so my goal, my thought here is that we can get out a bunch of books and kind of share them with you guys so maybe you'll know which ones are better to request from your library so you don't have to waste your holds. Okay, so the first one here is A 30 Days Has September. I've gotten this book out so many times, I should just buy it. It gives tips for kids on how to memorize things, but which is also what this next book does, but this one gives you things to actually memorize as well. So um, here's a page that talks about the difference between um, different words like new and new and how to remember that, uh, how to memorize the kings in history. Uh, I think this is the British history, kings and queens, Mount Rushmore, um, all sorts of different things, leap years, hurricane season, all different kinds of things. And I enjoy this. So if we're using this in our morning basket right now and just pulling out a thing or two that we want to learn. The next one here is Memory Superpowers, an adventurer's, adventurous guide to remembering what you don't want to forget. And this one really is all about different techniques for memorizing things. It has tons of different ideas on how to memorize, like remember people's names and foreign words and all sorts of different things. I just wish this one had more examples of like, here's some things you should memorize like this one does. Uh, it's got great techniques, but then you have to think of where you want to use these techniques. One we've been using for our poetry tea time is a whiff of pine, a hint of skunk. These are um, both hilarious and thoughtful poems about forest things. So we've got like a biography of a beaver, spring welcome. Um, we really enjoyed this. We haven't read through all of it yet. How to recognize a green tiger beetle. Um, but I'm enjoying this for like the autumn season. Highly recommend this for poetry tea time. Okay, I don't have very many novels here right now because my kids generally take them to their rooms. But I have the second book in The Smartest Kid in the Universe. This is Genius Camp. My son just talked about book one in a reading wrap-up that we did. He really enjoyed it, so he wanted book two out, so I got that for him. So you'll definitely notice a bit of a theme with our books here because um, for November we were going to be learning about fungus and stuff for our nature unit, which we are, but then it also snowed, so we're relying on some pictures and some of the stuff we saw at the very beginning of November. Uh, so, the first one here is Forest Magic. This is a guidebook for little woodland explorers. And it just talks about different parts of the forest. It's very short, but also very cute. Okay, I got Gulls, Gulls, Gulls. <laughs> this is by Gail Gibbons. She has some great books on a variety of different topics. I often will go through and just search her name on the library site and then request some books that interest me. And we have, Jared and I have been talking about gulls because I always call them seagulls, but we don't live by the sea, so they're not seagulls. So he likes to correct me on that. So when I saw this book, I was like, well, I have to get this one out. Um, I don't know if, I guess maybe she probably does her own illustrations. It doesn't say it, so I assume so. But she's got books on like every topic that we have enjoyed. Hibernation Station, we haven't read this one yet, but I thought since we're approaching winter here, this would be a good one. We've been doing like a picture book a day with our morning basket, so I will probably put this in that pile. Blue Baboon Finds Her Tune, a rhyming bedtime adventure. Um, this I think was a 2022 release. Yeah, so that's why I requested it. I like to request new picture books and see if they're worth it. Um, we haven't read this one yet either. 
but the pictures are really cute. I like the illustration style. It's very vibrant. So here we go. We're going into the fungus <laughs> stories. Fungus is among us. Among us. <laughs> this one's cute. Actually, I think we have two books out. Yeah, it's a fungus among us is an among us is another one we have. This one's got a cute art style. And then we got sugar and spice and everything mice. This is kind of another one for like the autumn winter season, I feel like. This one is this one a new one too? Oh, this is 2020. My kids love John Clausen's books, so this is The Rock from the Sky. And his books are so funny. They're um, this one's about a turtle who likes this spot, but then this other creature, I don't remember what it was. Um, maybe he's like an armadillo. He feels like something bad is going to happen on that spot. And you can probably tell from the title that a rock is going to come from the sky. And it's actually a really long book with not very many words. Um, it was funny. We enjoyed it. Okay, then I got this massive ultimate guide to mushrooms. How do I identify and gather over 200 species? We're not really gathering them. We're not going to eat mushrooms or anything. Um, I'm too paranoid that we would pick the wrong stuff. But these are really cool. So they're like full page about different kinds of mushrooms. So many different kinds. This um, covers North America and Europe. So if you're in one of those, it's a very good resource. We got out the mushroom hunt. This one's got that like old art style to it. Mushroom rain. See, there's definitely a theme. I love these illustrations. Look at that. That is so cool. So that one's mushroom rain. Into the forest, wander through our woodland wonder. It's obviously just feeling all the autumn forest vibes. Oh, this is pretty. And so with books like this, what I'll generally tend to do is just put these on our coffee table for the kids to explore at their own interest, at their own pace. Um, I do the whole like strewing thing for nonfiction books like this. Amazing Animal Journeys because I loved watching the geese migrate. It's actually just reminding me that I haven't seen one now for a while, so they've been gone for a while. I meant to mark the last date that I saw them. And I don't remember what it was, um, but I was loving the migration. So I got a few books out about migration and this one covers a variety of different animals that migrate, which is pretty neat to learn about. And I think these illustrations are so cute. Look at those little kids. And then on a bigger level, we've got the Atlas of Migrating Plants and Animals. So this is a little bit more intense. We've got the different types of animals information about them so I think they're just all on double spreads which I don't know I love this kind of art style oh here's another Gail Gibbons I think I went to request this one initially the migration one and then saw some of her other ones and then requested them so this one's all about migrations as well her books are like nonfiction, but not super heavy on the information department like you learn things but it's it's not overwhelming I find Okay, I can't remember if I shared this. I shared this on Instagram for sure. Cat Problems by Jory John. And we had just got a cat when we got this. So of course we had to read it. It's hilarious. It's, I mean, cats are quite the creatures. This spread is one of my favorites actually. Um, I like every book that we've read by Jory John, I'm pretty sure. And then we've got another mushrooms guide, how to identify and gather this one, yeah, it is a DK book. Um, so it's got the actual photographs of all the different mushrooms, which can be nice because if you are trying to pick them to eat, then you have a little bit more to go off of than just an illustration. There's some wonky fungus out there. Okay, so here's the other one that's got a similar name. It's a fungus among us. I wanna say among us, make it rhyme. So this one is a nonfiction informational book. Lots of information. This one is the Mushroom Fan Club. This one has adorable illustrations and is written by a Canadian. I love this. I love 
I love their people. And it sounds like I read the back here. They really enjoy um, collecting mushrooms. And there's information about different ones in here too. So that one's really cool. And another geese book. This one is looks like bookworms, migrating animals. This looks like the kinds of books that we used to have when I was in elementary school that we would read. Kind of like your ones you take home to read to your parents. It's hard when you are requesting books on the website sometimes for the library. You don't know what you're getting into, which is why I like to share uh, library halls. Okay, weather forecasting is, well, weather is one of the um, topics for November's nature unit. It's the last week of the month or the fourth week. And so we got weather casting by Gail Gibbons and her books, like she wrote a lot of them quite a long time ago, but the information is still very applicable. Oh yeah, I got a Robert Munch, Stephanie's Ponytail. We actually haven't read this one yet because it got stuck in between all these books, but I love some good Robert Munch. His books are generally hilarious. And we bought this one. Tops and Bottoms by Janet Stevens. I really don't remember why I requested this one. But it's cool to have a book that's read this way. I'm just not a fan of picture books that have so many words per page. I don't know why that turns me off. Okay, this one is I'm saving for a little bit. It's Pick a Pine Tree um, because we are going to be setting up our Christmas tree soon. We were going to last weekend, but then someone was sick and now someone else is sick. So we'll see. As Canadians, I feel like we get to put it up earlier without feeling bad because we did our Thanksgiving a long time ago. Um, this is adorable though. We don't get a new tree or like a real tree. We just have a fake one, but this one looks cute. Okay, then we've got some more Jory John. We got the Smart Cookie and the Good Egg. And I know my son has another one because there was definitely another one too. Uh, we've gotten these out before. They're just <laughs> stories about the different characters. Um, his, his writing, his, the whoever he gets to illustrate, I'm not sure if it's always, this one's Pete Oswald, Oswald. I don't know if it's always him, but they always go really well. So we got the smart cookie. Just cute. Oh yeah, we have another one, the bad seed, but there's still another one because I accidentally got one that like reads it aloud to you. I didn't realize when I was requesting it. Um, I don't think I've read this one, but I like the other ones in the series, so I gotta read that one. Time to shine, celebrating the world's iridescent animals. So this is all about iridescence. I wish they had, um, I mean, I don't know how you would do that. It had like sparkly, the pages were more sparkly, but that would be expensive, I guess. But that's cool. So many creative looking animals out there. Okay, I think this one is another 2022 release. Dad, Dadaji's paintbrush. That's not, I'm sure how you say that at all. So just another one that I wanted to look at. I need to read it. And then I usually do a list of the best picture books from that were published that year. Okay, and then the last one I think I have to share. I mean, I have a bunch of books out for myself too. Uh, this book is magic. Okay, so I think this is a interactive picture book. We haven't done this one yet either. Too many people being sick. Yeah, so you start by waving your magic finger and saying abracadabra. Even though my kids are like on the older end, they still really enjoy interactive picture books. So that's why I got that out. Okay, so that was a lot of books. That's what we currently have out. A lot more on the like picture book side of things than normal. Usually we're more heavy on the resource guide book side of things, but um, let me know some good things you've gotten from the library lately, or if there's a book that you are interested in that your library has, but you don't know if you should request or doesn't have, let me know. I'll request it and we'll show you what it looks like. Thanks so much for being here.